you. Where are all my link marines? Are they here? Oh, all right, all right, okay. Um, so uh, I'm gonna take you through a little bit of history of um, sort of what we've been doing in this space to, I, I figured it's a very new audience, I need to re repeat myself occasionally. Um, so th let's get right into it. Uh, it's a quick presentation. I will be available for questions afterwards um, to, you know, for, for all of the things you wanna ask. And by the way, I don't know if anyone saw my socks. All right, so very quick, um, this, is, this is me, maybe the more colorful ver version of me, but I started this work in 2015 when I personally fell down the rabbit hole and decided that if I was gonna stay at Microsoft, I would have to drag Microsoft down this rabbit hole with me. So um, done that over the years. I also have a very uh, sort of long career in technology, so I come with a lot of different perspectives. Actually, I currently teach e-commerce, which was a really interesting moment when, when the NFT uh, sort of thing happened in, in the past couple of years. Right? It's like basically e-commerce on steroids. No supply chain issues. Um, really an interesting uh, sort of variant when you're talking about uh, e-commerce. So um, I, my main social is uh, York Roads on Twitter, which you'll see throughout this presentation. Um, and here we go. Okay, so blockchain is alive and well at Microsoft. Um, we've been a little bit quiet uh, during the pandemic, um, but uh, we've seen this change in market narrative, particularly from our brand customers asking us what's going on in this space, how do we think about this, how do we think about security, consumer protection, regulation, compliance, etc. how do we think about blockchains all up, right, and all of the different blockchains that are out there. You heard uh, Gun earlier talk about the explosion of, of blockchains um, and the speed improvements, et cetera, et cetera. So, um, there's a little history here I just want to take you through just to give you a sense of where we've been on this journey. Um, this is about five months after I started this work in April 2016. We actually shipped Visual Studio uh, developer kit for Solidity. Uh, at the time, we were very focused on Ethereum primarily. And so you can see here probably some people you recognize, including myself, the gentleman next to me is Satya Nadella, who's the CEO of Microsoft. Uh, some of you might recognize the guy on the far side, that's Vitalik, um, and then between Vitalik and uh, Satya is Andrew Keyes, who is one of the first employees of Consensus, um, which was really where this partnership was born, and also what we're doing here from a developer tooling perspective. Um, Michael Del Castillo, who actually works for Forbes now, um, didn't correct this article, <laughs> um, so I just corrected it. We had about nine million developers at the time at, at, on our tooling at Microsoft. So, um, that's sort of the, the long back history. We also co-founded the Enterprise Ethereum Alliance in 2017. I'm still a board member and treasurer of that. It's a very active um, group of both enterprises and startups and exchanges and consultancies um, that are really looking to help advance the story here um, around decentralization. And so we have, you know, I just put some examples of some assets here that you can get from the Enterprise Ethereum Alliance uh, online. We also co-founded the Centralized Identity Foundation. Um, this, we knew it would be a long journey, um, but basically this is where DIDs and verifiable claims come from. Um, there's a lot of, uh, there's actually work today uh, in a product available from Microsoft called Entra, um, which actually implements the specifications. It does not do it in any decentralized way. It's actually using the DID web protocol, if anyone knows, knows these protocols. Um, but it is an implementation that has followed that, those standards that we've been working on. Um, in 2018, um, I helped launch the world's first uh, blockchain bond. Um, this was a bond that was a collaboration between the World Bank uh, as well as the uh, Royal Bank of Australia. Um, and uh, we built this, uh, launched it together on both Google Cloud and on Microsoft's Azure Cloud. Um, and so we had inter-cloud blockchain uh, synchronization going on as there. And you know, we had to go through basically a full security audit in the Treasury Department of the World Bank because they were actually using it on terminals in the World Bank for trading and things like that. So very interesting project. Um, that was 2018. Um, this is work that I actually currently steward full time at Microsoft. Um, this is our supply chain work. Um, we have uh, currently, you can see a bunch of the supplier partners uh, that were involved in this project from the beginning. Uh, we won a Gartner Award. Uh, which is there on the screen. Um, and there's about 28 uh, what we call commodities suppliers in our, in our supply chain um, that are being onboarded over the next 12 months to be on the system. And that basically, from a high-tech ecosystem, 
are all the commodity suppliers in the high-tech ecosystem, so it actually creates sort of a center of excellence where we expect that to actually grow as more and more people seek to do similar work. This is a Web3 stack. It's basically running Ethereum plus IPFS with a whole application stack above it up through an API that allows you to connect to legacy systems like SAP and Dynamics and warehouse systems. These are the things you have to do in supply chains. Um, and we're actually running an experiment right now to take that private implementation of a Web3 stack and port it over into public Ethereum and a layer two and basically validate that we can get the same, same privacy privileges that we have in, in this private context in, in public using obviously things like zero knowledge rollups and layer twos, et cetera, et cetera. Um, we made a couple of investments. R uh, Rashmi, who was on earlier, talked a little bit about these. Um, so we have um, we made an investment in 2021 with the Palm NFT Studio. If anyone, anyone knows this team, they came out of consensus protocol team, basically uh, sort of joined up with some folks in the entertainment industry and were really focused on brands usage of NFT like DC Comics, Batman, The Matrix, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so it's really what I would call our first Web3, real Web3 external investment through our venture studio, which is called M12. <clears throat> the consensus investment, I mentioned before that we started this work actually with consensus in 2015. We made a corp dev investment um, earlier this year. We actually started this discussions la late last year, but participated in consensus's uh, fundraising round. Um, there are a lot of things that we do with consensus. We work very closely with MetaMask and Fura, um, uh, what is it called, uh, Codify. Um, the Quorum blockchain service actually was, is the recommended place to go um, after the Microsoft blockchain service, um, which is a SaaS offering, uh, was deprecated for, for various reasons around priorities. Um, so that's a recent one. Um, we just mentioned uh, prior to this, uh, this space and time, uh, investment, which is a really interesting database use case um, and something I've thought about for a long time. Basically, SQL Server with um, stored queries is essentially an engine with smart contracts, but it's obviously highly centralized. And so if you can decentralize that, it's a pretty interesting opportunity um, and really excited about uh, the work that's going on with the space and time team. So thank you to Nate and Scott, who are pictured there. Um, and then um, we actually did some really interesting work that was published. I think it was actually published late last year, but nobody knew about it. So I announced it last week at Mainnet and, and re-announced it this week at, uh, at SmartCon. Um, this is work where our research team in Microsoft Research basically decomposed the EVM and figured out how we could pre-calculate speculative transactions. Basically, if you look at the bottom left of this chart here, if you go through all the permutations of what is the possible next instruction that will be executed uh, through a smart contract language. If you can pre-execute it, then you basically do that before the window, while consensus is happening, essentially before the window of execution, and so we can speed up the execution time because we already know the answer. We've basically gone to predictive calculations about what the answer is, and then we choose the one that is done, and then we just plug it in during the execution window. So it basically speeds up execution of BBMs by six times. To me, that's not just a benefit to Ethereum mainnet, it's a benefit to anybody who's using an EVM. And as you know, that's 13 plus different chains, right? So that's a pretty massive opportunity and improvement in the ecosystem. What you can also see here is the 6X is a weighted average. There are cases where we've gotten 1,000 times speed improvements because we picked the right thing and, and things were happening in, in terms of the right block size and you know, just a number of things coming together. So you can see here, by the way, that like a lot of, there's a long thread actually on my, on my Twitter. Um, this is basically where I interact with the crypto Twitter community. Um, so it's a, definitely a place to go. Uh, if you didn't catch it, um, I've known Vitalik for a long time, so I can actually reply to his tweets. Um, so some, some people will con congratulate you for that. But, no. Anyway. Um, all right. So last couple of slides here. Um, what am I concerned about? Um, obviously, a lot of things, right? It's a lot of noise going on in the market, both on the speculative side, on the macroeconomic conditions, but most importantly, on the regulators starting to say, Right? How do we exercise our muscles, right, for good or for bad? Um, and sometimes overreaching, and, and we saw OFAC actually overreach, right, with the tornado cash example. Fortunately, they reversed some of that, and so that was actually positive. And by the way, if anyone didn't notice, GitHub did ban some accounts 
on GitHub related to tor tornado cache, but they've been restored. So this was, um, I, what I call this is sort of a knee-jerk reaction, not knowing anything really about what tornado cache was from a GitHub perspective. They had to make a rash decision and say, well, better to be safe than actually like know what we're doing, right? So basically my, my assumption is two things. One, um, knee-jerk reaction. Two, they went and did some research, figured out what was actually going on. And then three, OFAC actually clarified their, uh, their statement. Um, so it's been reestablished. So that's actually quite good. So a couple things here. Um, obviously I mentioned regulatory overreach. Um, uh, privacy. So I've been talking a lot about privacy. Um, that's why I wore this particular shirt from Zcash. Um, privacy, and, and the tornado cache example is re really a privacy problem. Um, when we talk about regulatory overreach from a Microsoft perspective, we want to ensure that technology and developers are not the targets, right? It's usage and bad behavior that should be the targets, right? And so this is a distinction that outside of crypto, we've had as a company from our inception. Because if you target technology, then you are targeting the innovations that's happening in technology, right? And so that's the wrong thing to do. Um, and that, again, this is not a crypto statement. This is just how we look at the world from the perspective of a company that built a business on software and software development, right? So um, those are my concerns. Let's talk about what I'm excited about, okay? Um, oh, actually, irresponsible actors. Uh, we could name a few. I won't. But <laughs> um, so what am I excited about? Um, I'm excited about quite a few things. Um, this was um, sort of a precursor to things that I'm excited about. Um, zero knowledge proofs to me are essentially the next massive uh, innovation in this space. What's also quite interesting about this is that the development work that's been going on in zero knowledge proofs is so far ahead that anyone ever thought that it would be at this point in time. So it's amazing work by the community for all of those developers out there who are doing zero knowledge proof work, amazing. Um, by the way, we have a team inside of Microsoft Research that is a zero knowledge proof fundamental research team. They've also done some research, and they haven't published it yet, I'm trying to get them to publish it, where they've been able to speed up proving time um, with some techniques. Um, so there, you know, the, the landscape, this is one of the things I always say about the landscape of blockchain and crypto, it actually just crosses all these other academic sectors. And you, if you get those people interested, then you can actually get a lot of value out of, um, out of what's going on in the space. Um, obviously, layer two rollups, um, ZK rollups, ZK sync, there's so many different examples. I mentioned scaling. Prover time is probably the critical thing here um, that will get us down the road. Um, a nuance here, and actually Gun, Gun mentioned this in his talk earlier, if you think about scalability of an ecosystem and scalability of applications, you can run any number of zero-knowledge roll-up chains next to each other, right? So if you think about getting 10,000 transactions packed into a particular application's zero-knowledge roll-up chain, and then doing that with another one, well, your transaction speed's actually equivalent, equivalent to 20,000, right? So like, you can just deploy a lot of different layer twos to get scale. And actually, this is one of the things that we're thinking about uh, in the supply chain work. Uh, would it make sense to do a bunch of different layer twos for, the, for privacy, um, or how would we think about doing that? So there's a, there's a number of things there. Um, also, obviously, the ZKM or EVM work that's going on uh, at a number of different organizations, including Polygon, ZK Sync, and others, um, is phenomenal work. This is basically, if people are not aware of this, taking core recognition of zero knowledge proofs directly into the EVM. Um, and that's actually very powerful for um, so many different applications and obviously, obviously improves the layer two, two approach as well. Um, the bridging environment is obviously fraught with concerns and, and risk. Um, so there's a lot of activity going on in this space as well. Um, and there's also a lot of interesting, uh, if, you, if you look across different startups, I, I just put these words down at the bottom, you can find ZK assets, ZK addresses, ZK bridges, ZK rollups. Literally, I think this is the way the world is going and it is part of the scalability story. So I wanna close for my link marines here with, <laughs> One more thing, which if you're watching my Twitter, you would have seen this already. Um, but as you've seen today, like, Sergey never smiles, right? And so um, a couple of years ago, I basically asked that question. And uh, this is a, uh, an opportunity where I got a little bit of a smile out of Sergey. So, um, but anyway, thank you, everyone. <laughs>